All righty, friends. Well, thank you for joining us um, at on this webinar. We're very excited to be here today to be able to use this technology to connect uh, with those that might not be with us on a regular basis, those who might live in Illinois or Indiana or Miss, you know, Michigan or Wisconsin, uh, someplace where it is a lot cooler, most likely, than it is right here, right now. But we are just, we're thankful for you. And um, we have some neat things, some exciting things that we want to share today on this webinar. We are recording it. That way, again, it can be shared in the future on our YouTube channel. Uh, but we, we wanted to start out just by acknowledging that even if you are not with us in person every week, we're going to have an in-person opportunity to share this information on Sunday. The hope is today you know that we value and we are just so thankful that you are part of this congregation. We know there's individuals that are watching today or that will watch that um, are here three months out of the year, four months out of the year, five months out of the year. We also know some that watch are only here a couple times out of the year, but we want you to know that you are key to us here at Cypress Lake United Methodist. We're thankful for you, and we're we're thankful for the connection that you have with this congregation. Today, our, our purpose is to share some exciting things that we are, are looking ahead to the future, living into our mission and vision here at Cypress Lake. Uh, we're going to be sharing some uh, some dreams, some some exciting things that we've been talking about internally for some time. Um, and, and at the end of the time, we're going to be able to have an action where we are able to continue to pray for a process that we are in the middle of right now. But today, we again want to just welcome you here and, and are excited about you and excited about um, the dreams that, that God has for us. I wanted to open us with a word of prayer. And then today, we're going to be hearing from Cindy Cook, who is our, our church administrator, we're going to be hearing from Glenn Pittard, who is our church council chair. We're also going to be hearing from Jim Brookover, who is our finance team chair. Um, and all these individuals are, are a part of this today and a part of the process of, of sharing this, this exciting news about some dreams we have for our facilities here, here in Fort Myers. Let's open up with a word of prayer together. Let's, let's pray together. God, we are thankful people, thankful to be here, thankful to be a part of this church, God, we are thankful for the technology that brings us together today. Now, God, we ask that over the next 45 minutes or so, that as we hear about how we're being called to live out this vision here in Fort Myers, uh, we pray, God, that you give us, um, give us wisdom, give us discernment. Thank you for those who are presenting today and sharing uh, from the work that so many have done before us. Bless this time, God, make it holy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to turn it over now to Cindy, and Cindy Cook is going to be sharing a little bit about sort of the history of, of our master plan and what brings us here to this point today. Thank you. Um, I do just want to start with um, that history, like Marcus said, um, just to give some context. Um, some of you may have been going here for years um, or coming down seasonally for years, um, and maybe it's just been in the past year or so that you've been coming to join us. So maybe um, this is going to be all new, but for some history and context of, of how we are arriving at today, um, I do want to share the part that since 2017, there has been a committee formed, uh, maybe not with all the same people, um, but starting in 2017, a mixture of staff people, um, as well as some lay leaders and lay volunteers um, who were involved, just like how Glenn and Jim are involved today, um, were on that committee in 2017. Started to meet, go over what was happening on our campus, what were our programs, what were our needs, how many, you know, children's programs and rooms were needed and things like that were all assessed for the whole entire property. Also at that time, we looked at things like parking and uh, driving through the property. Um, this is important, not only for Sunday, but we have events and maybe you saw in the email things like trunk or treat are coming up and, you know, that uses a lot of our campus. So we did want to have a comprehensive approach to how we looked at that. Um, at that time, all those things were evaluated and then the concept got onto paper with some drawings and some recommendations about how to use the whole entire property that included things like removing the storage barn that was in the back of the property and now following Hurricane Ian is not there, um, but it also included removing the multi-purpose building or what you might think of as the house or old parsonage 
in the back of the property. And also in the plan at that time, it was decided that the future need would result in a, a very large new fellowship hall or multi-purpose space. So that was going to be another building that would be removed, but then constructed newly. Um, again, there was a lot of drainage, trees, lighting, um, a lot of parking changes and, and rerouting and things like that. It was a really comprehensive plan. Um, right up until about, um, I won't know the day, but it was the beginning of 2020, um, you know, things were moving right along and there were several consultants and professionals involved in that process um, were advising us to complete a sort of a permitting process, but it's called a development order where all the various governmental entities come together and approve things like the water management on your property and the traffic studies, um, particularly because we are on a large intersection, things like that do have to be considered. So all of those steps were taken. And then we all started to feel the effects of COVID, um, probably physically um, for many of us, but uh, there was also either shutdowns or changes to schedules. And at our church, that was no different. So there were several months we weren't having services and just doing those online rather than in person. Um, so, you know, things did slow down. The committee, though, decided instead of completely stopping, not to waste the investment of time or money paid to all these professional services and things like that, let's go ahead and get this development order approved. And it would be approved for a certain number of years and it can be amended. So in order to kind of preserve all that work and just um, shelf it for a certain period of time that was at that point unknown, um, that's what it happened. Um, the committee then stopped meeting and it was just, um, you know, kind of tabled until some later date when the outcome of all of that that was happening at that time could be known. So, um, you know, that nothing else was moved forward on, nothing else was planned, changed, anything like that with that um, until very recently. And Pastor Marcus is going to talk about that. Um, that really was instigated by the events of Hurricane Ian. So I'll stop right there about that part. And Marcus, if you want to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, a year ago up until now. Perfect. Thank you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we, we, we want to focus. Thank you, Cindy, for that history. History is so important. It reminds us where we've come from. But also, we want to take time not just simply to focus on back then, but we really want to focus on our current reality now, what matters to us now, where we are right now. A lot's happened over the last three years. Uh, we survived and went through a COVID um, season where we weren't worshiping in person for a while. We also navigated Hurricane Ian, one of the uh, most deadly and, and costliest storms that um, that we've ever experienced. And it's it's been a, just an unprecedented three-year period. But it brings us to where we are today, and we continue to find ways to navigate this. And um, I want to encourage you, if you have not watched September 17th worship yet, I want to encourage you to make a note to do that over the next couple of weeks. Because on September 17th, we talk specifically about our mission, our vision, and the strategies that value we value here at Cypress Lake United Methodist. That really helps with some of the context, because for current reality today, I want to take time to talk a little bit, not about necessarily our full mission and vision and strategies again, but I want to talk a little bit about the challenges that we have right now. Some of the things that, that we're up against, that we're looking to navigate faithfully as we live into our mission and vision and strategies. The first thing we're navigating as a challenge is that we had on our campus some significant damage due to Hurricane Ian. Uh, we were blessed on our campus not to, to have flooding, but we had a lot of wind damage to almost every building on campus. Uh, the Fellowship Hall was one of the buildings that received significant damage uh, on the roof. Um, it, we have been in the process of, of taking care and alleviating a lot of the damage that happened. But also in the process of that damage that it received, we've had water that has intruded into our fellowship hall. And we're still trying to really figure out what that means moving into the future. So that is a challenge that's before us. Uh, another challenge that we have on our campus is 
Um, as Cindy mentioned, we had a master plan that the church was excited about going into 2019 and 2020 before the shutdown happened. And part of that master plan was for the fellowship hall building to actually be demolished. And there was going to be a brand new building that was going to be, be built. Um, and because of that, there has been about a four or five year time frame in which we have not really done a whole lot of significant repairs or maintenance to that building. So you add that together with the challenge of, of, of the hurricane where we had substantial wind damage and water intrusion. Um, and those are pretty significant facility challenges for our fellowship hall. We also look at our fellowship hall as another challenge um, is the, the building that hosts our, our children's ministry currently, and hopefully in the future, our children and youth ministries. And the exciting thing as a church that it's a challenge also though, is that we've experienced some pretty significant growth over the last year. Um, we look at our numbers internally, and over the last year, as we have navigated COVID, as we have navigated together Hurricane Ian, um, we continue to bring new people and new families and new children and new youth in on a weekly basis. Our worship attendance over the last year is about 25 to 30% more than it was a year ago. Our children's ministry has grown by about 50% over, over the last year. Our, our youth ministry has also grown by, by that or more over the last year. Uh, these are challenges because we have limited space on campus, but there are also exciting challenges as we continue to navigate our mission and vision. And just a reminder of that, our, our mission is to, to love God. Our mission is to grow as disciples, and our mission is to serve others. And our vision here at this church is to radiate God's love here, there, and everywhere. And as we continue to do that with these challenges— um, the leadership has has continued to try to discern what that means for our future facility needs on this campus. I'm going to turn it over now to our, our church council chair, Glenn Pittard, and he's going to share a little bit about the master planning team that's come together again over the last six months. Glenn? Thank you, Marcus. And Cindy and Jim, Ron and Grady, everyone else. Um, yeah, you know, I, I guess it was maybe back in uh, maybe back in the, the, the late spring. Um, you know, we we uh, we began talking about uh, the master planning committee and and getting back together as a group and <clears throat> and trying to uh, understand where we had left off because some of those uh, persons serving on that committee had changed and moved on and etc. But all, all these, all the pieces were in place, uh, basically for us to, um, you know, pick up kind of where we had left off and uh, and and to, and to continue our campus growth. Um, so, you know, ba basically, um, as has been alluded to, you know, uh, there was a there was a plan to to get rid of the existing fellowship hall and and build a new sort of family life. Uh, type of building, uh, along with you know improvements uh, to the to the site, which would mean you know parking and uh, correcting some drainage issues. If you guys that are here during rainy season, you know where the drainage issues are. Um, but we've had uh, some some other uh, things as well with lighting and and etc. And so you know as part of all that, it, it was I would say the process for some of this was really sped up by the hurricane. And, and perhaps the subsequent damage that the fellowship hall suffered over the summer during rainy season with a lot of water intrusion and et cetera. But, but, but basically what we did is we, we, uh, we, we came up with three options really is what we sort of focused on that, that uh, three, three possible paths to, to, uh, to, to some sort of resolution. Um, the, the first one that we talked about was just addressing uh, the storm, the storm, and the water-related repairs to the fellowship hall, um, and that was basically a two hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollar, you know, estimation of where where just taking care of the the existing damages may be. Um, the other option um, 
was really uh, was the the the, uh, the brand new building, and that which would have followed the original master plan that had been put in place back beginning in 2017. Um, you know, we understood that the the dollar value of things in 2017 uh, is a lot different than things are right now, and so. Uh, what we, I think at the time, had estimated was probably an, an eight or nine million dollar project turned into probably 14 or 15 million dollars worth in today's dollars. So that that seemed like a um, an unlikely scenario for us to follow. So what we sort of settled on was a, a, a bit of a compromise, if you will. Um, uh, it's somewhat similar to what we did um, in Bright Beginnings. You know, we, we took the existing footprint and then updated it and modified it and pushed a few walls around here and there, but, but, but basically with the idea that we could, we could maintain that existing footprint, um, but bring it up to speed, bring it up to date in a way that would, uh, that would, would, would accomplish more of the, the daily function and the weekly function that we need that building to do, right? More, more space for youth and child, uh, child children's ministry programs um, more space for general Christian fellowship, right? Which I think is something that we all have, have craved and long thought that that building could, could probably be better served in that way. So that was really the option that we settled on. It was sort of, a, sort of the, 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 the middle plan, if you will, was to correct the problems that were there, um, bring it up to speed and uh, better uh, suited for what we anticipate growth coming down the next few years. And, uh, and to include in that uh, the, the, the site work that we also feel is needed, the parking, the lighting, um, et cetera. Um, does that cover that area? Pretty good, you think, Marcus? That's great, Glenn, okay. that's great. And now we uh, will put on um, the graphic of sort of what Glenn was talking about. And, and I know Glenn and Cindy are going to walk us through this part. So I'll start explaining a little bit. And um, Glenn, you can talk right on right on over me or tell me stop anytime you want. Um, this black and white drawing right here that you should be able to see on your screen is the fellowship hall as it is right now. Um, so this shows the layout, um, that big squares, the big open room. Um, there's some storage, some classrooms, kitchen, bathrooms. Um, that's just exactly how it's laid out right now. Um, looking at this kind of as a starting point, like Len was saying, um, and that was really great to bring up Bright, bright Beginnings because it is very much like that um, that evaluation process of how big is this building, what what is allowable if we were going to look at any expansions to it. Um, we did find out in the course of working with the experts um, on this option that we are limited because of the type of construction that was done on this building originally. Um, the exterior walls, especially on the north side and on the south side, um, the south side wouldn't be an option. It's too close to the chapel anyway. If you walk between those buildings, you know what I mean? Um, but on the north side where we have more of that open space, um, to move those walls is really not um, an easy feat, um, but we were told that we could make some changes to the east and west sides. Um, we could make changes um, with moving around walls and bathrooms and all that kind of stuff on the interior. So we started working on some concepts of how that would be done. What would we put where and you know what could we expand and that kind of thing. So um, this being kind of the existing structure through many different conversations, meetings, emails, all that kind of stuff, then we came up with what Grady's going to forward next is has some color in it, and I can explain that too. But this is kind of what we would be proposing to move to. Um, anywhere where you see the red is new, so that would be an addition space that we're looking at if it's red. So we can go out a little bit um, into what is currently a fenced in former playground, there's really nothing down on that end, what that leads into is some parking area and some roadway that goes around the outside of our property. Um, and in that space, we found that we could add three rooms 
and then a hallway to access those. And then on the complete opposite side of the building, um, like a formal lobby um, that would have another bathroom in it. Um, what that also does on the outside, you might notice, um, is create a little bit of patio area uh, for some outdoor fellowship opportunities. We have done several different things that you may or may not have participated in, but um, for example, this past Easter, we did a butterfly release out in the grassy area. Um, this new patio area would be a nice place to stage something like, well, here's all the butterflies, or even if we had refreshments, um, but it's something that we could have standing uh, tables and chairs, we could have coffee out there, that kind of thing. So that's kind of an, an interesting idea that, that kind of came out of this process too. Um, when you look at that more interior space of the fellowship hall as it would be renovated, um, several of the spaces have been moved around or repurposed. So the storage area is a lot bigger and some of the rooms have been consolidated. Um, the bathrooms were relocated to along the north wall so they can be bigger. Um, that's not only because something people desire, but um, it does also allow us to meet all the current codes. So that's something you always have to consider when you're looking at a renovation is, you know, this building was built in the 80s and it was not, all the laws and codes would have been different at that time. So we do have to meet some of those things. And so there are some requirements that maybe we wouldn't necessarily think about, but um, we do still maintain a kitchen, two bathrooms, a family bathroom in between those two that does have a shower stall in it, which is really useful for things like um, core hurricane teams who have spent time on our property following Hurricane Ian, or if there's youth sleepovers or activities like that, then there's a shower space in this building, which that's a, that's a new um, nice thing to have. All that open seating, we originally on the previous plan, I'm not sure that it's marked, um, but we would probably tell you that we could fit about 100 to 115 in that fellowship hall, like right now. Um, but what happens in this drawing is it goes up to 200 about. So like Glenn was saying, all those fellowship opportunities, we would really be able to get a lot more people inside so we could have dinners or um, receptions for various functions, things like that. Um, in our current fellowship hall, there are three children's ministry rooms. And this plan shows four rooms, which are all larger than our current rooms. And there's two additional rooms, which we're foreseeing as youth space. So it's it's not entirely in stone, but that's that's what we've kind of come up with up until this point. And Glenn, I'm going to let you add what you would like to add now. I missed anything. Uh, I don't know. I think you covered it pretty well. I mean, I, I would say, you know, one of the things that um, um, I, one of the things that I that I really wanted to 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 change in that particular building, or I thought would. Um, from from a children's ministry standpoint would be that you know the the narrow hallway that existed over uh, between the basically separated the open area of the fellowship hall with those back rooms you know really made it difficult to navigate through that hallway for parents picking up young children uh, after church or whatnot and also if and you guys remember last year when we had that potluck in there we had the drinks kind of down that hall and it was really difficult to to kind of work through there so <clears throat> you know that those are the types of things that we that we um, considered and 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 you know and uh, went back and forth with about how to best sort of maximize the space and so uh, mm -hmm. I don't know I think you covered it pretty well Cindy I wanted to mention that um, that that yeah, wall yeah. because I think everybody is familiar with that and you know you can see how much that will open up the room. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, I think that covers it pretty well. Okay. Um, a couple of things I did want to mention. We aren't going to be able to show you any kind of site design for what we hope to do to the rest of the property, um, even though we have talked about that a little bit. Um, when we go out from this building and look at everything else, um, like I mentioned at the beginning, we did talk about having a couple less buildings in the back. I guess what I consider the back of the property um, along the north side, the 
multi-purpose building, the barn, which is gone. Um, we are not going to go to the extent that we thought that we would in 2017 on that project. Um, but in the area where you can imagine that that house is, um, we are able to propose a new paved parking area over there that we will have a par about 80 new paved parking spaces and kind of adjacent to that or or maybe kind of across what you think of as that little access road, there's a line of disabled parking and we are going to be able to lengthen that and add some additional spaces. And that's a commonly requested thing. Um, so there will be additional parking in general, it will be paved and we are going to try to add more disabled spaces. And if you ask how many, I really don't know right now, that's something for the civil engineer to work out. But um, part of what will end up happening when this is all really fully drawn is things like all the needed trees or all the needed light posts, all that kind of stuff will become known and available for us to distribute. It's just that right now they're actively working on that. So so we don't have that at the moment, but I do know that that's some of the um, improvements that are in the works. Um, the drainage, like Glenn talked about, along the um, west side of the property, there's the little access road kind of right where um, you can see that mouse moving. And it would take you out to the Winkler exit. That is commonly underwater during heavy rains. And so we're going to do some drainage improvements along there and also along the north side of the property to route water away from where we're either having events or where we're trying to park and that kind of thing. I, I think that's pretty good, Cindy. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we there's maybe the highlights for sure. Yeah, there's uh, one more graphic that we can share today, um, which does show one more view of what we think that the fellowship hall might look like. And um, I guess the disclaimer here is we are talking about a renovation and we do want to be consistent with our other buildings. So you might say like, wow, that's very brown. And it is. But um, when we look at this drawing, what we can see is at the top, it's like we are standing in the grassy area where the butterflies were released and we're looking back at Fellowship Hall. And at the end, there will be a fenced in area kind of on your right side of the paper there or screen. And then all the way at the opposite end or like the left side of this screen, there is um, some windows. So we would try to match up with the look of how the sanctuary narthex walls look of you know all those windows and light um that's something that will help make it all go together um and it is also nice to incorporate natural light in these kind of spaces but um that is kind of that lobby area the other two pictures would be looking at as you can tell by the size difference either you're looking at the very bottom graphic at as if you were exiting the sanctuary building and you're looking at fellowship hall that would be like you're standing in this new patio space and looking at the lobby and then the other one would be as if you were parking down by the end of the fellowship hall or the youth center that's what that's what that would look like so that's definitely in that middle view not a main entrance it's and that would be fenced in um, that will hold things like the air conditioning units and things like that so um that one's not really quite as um exciting to take in but um, the top graphic and the bottom would kind of give you the feeling of what it would look like when you were on campus Perfect. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Glenn. Now we're going to ask Jim, Jim Brooke over to share a little bit about uh, sort of the financial impacts of all of this, the the plans that we've seen and the, the elevations that we've seen. Thanks, Marcus. Um, at the uh, August 22nd uh, Finance Committee meeting, the presentation was given by the Master Planning Committee uh, and its vision for the Fellowship Hall. Uh, like was said, when Hurricane Ian blew through, it did significant damage to the Fellowship Hall and led to the opportunity to review its part uh, in the Master Plan. Um, 
the reconfiguration of Fellowship Hall um, was described uh, in this presentation with its role in the church's 10-year mission vision, uh, which was important. The, the Finance Committee uh, really discussed and it covered all these options that have been presented, and they were presented by the Master Planning Committee, including the substantial repairs, um, to the building that were caused by the hurricane, uh, but then would have to be renovated shortly thereafter to serve the vision uh, that we have for this facility. Um, and then they chose, uh, well, actually the three options. Uh, the last one, the renovation and expansion of the existing facility was really discussed in length uh, with the committee represented and the finance committee uh, talking back and forth. And the the cost was estimated between uh, four and five million to do this, which was substantially less than the original cost. And it would also serve our vision, like I said, into the next 10 years. Um, basically, the summary of that meeting, it was a lengthy meeting discussing all of the items and going back and forth. It was considered that it was be fiscally prudent to proceed uh, to support the Master Planning Committee's recommendation with the cost of between four and five million. That was the vote, and it was unanimous uh, by the Finance Committee. But in addition, uh, we've had some experienced people on the, on the committee. Uh, they felt that we needed professional fundraising, uh, a firm for professional fundraising. Um, and I was telling fundraising firm would bring marketing expertise to support our program effort and would also take a significant workload off our already busy church staff. Um, so shortly after that meeting, Cindy, Marcus, and I researched firms. We looked at nine firms and narrowed the list down to two and transforming Christian ministries in Carter Global were the two that we narrowed it down to. Then we proceeded to arrange Zoom meetings with the three of us and each of the uh, companies that we had selected the two. And we found that they were both really highly qualified. And uh, we had done our research and it was true that they were high quality companies but we thought transforming Christian ministries would be a better fit with a Cypress Lake. Um, so at the September 28th meeting, transforming Christian ministries was approved by the finance committee uh, as the firm uh, the church prefers to use to help in this financing effort. Um, so that is just starting to get underway. And um, it looks like we're off to a good start. Um, in addition to that fundraising, the finance committee next step is to look at financing. And we know we're going to have to do some construction financing. And our hope is we can work with the Florida United Methodist Foundation uh, to help us in this effort. 
Um, so that's what we're pursuing first. And but we'll be looking at all options as we go further down this path. And it'll be in parallel, of course, with the fundraising effort uh, for this new facility or remodeled facility. Um, and that's basically it. It's been a busy month and a half. It sure has, Jim. Thank you, you know, for your leadership. Thank you for your team's leadership and um, all the all the extra time you've put into this. We wanted to take a opportunity now to um, open it up for questions. We we know that this is new information and there might not be a whole lot of questions um, right at this moment, but we did want to see if anyone had any questions and you can put those questions in the Q&A. We're not going to stay here too long for questions because over the next few weeks, we're going to have an opportunity to answer any questions that come in. Our, our follow-up after this is going to be an in-person session that we have this Sunday in our sanctuary at, at four o'clock PM. And I know a lot of you that are on this call aren't here right now. So that's why we wanted to, to make this opportunity available first and foremost the nice thing about this also is we are recording this, so we'll be able to share this um, with anyone that might have, you know, have questions or just might want to really know what's going on if they can't attend in person. Um, and the only question I see is is a is a thank you. So um, that is very affirming, John. So thank you for the for the thank you um, as far as being here today. Um, the last thing I want to say about this, and if any more questions come in, Bronwyn, please, please let us know, but really just wanted to, to say we're excited about this. We, we've come a long way since COVID. We've come a long way since a year ago. We just celebrated the, the year anniversary of Hurricane Ian, and we're excited about what we see happening in this community. Uh, we're excited about uh, the congregation that is gathered here, that God has put together, not just the congregation, but the staff and leaders here at Cypress Lake United Methodist Church. We're, we're thankful for what is happening in our midst. We are seeing new people walk in these doors every week. We're seeing um, new needs that are that are coming to um, our, our awareness every single day. And we're just thankful for the ability to live into what we really discern that God is calling us to do. And we really feel that these facility and site upgrades are, are not only going to be able to help us have a safe place where we can gather, but really are going to allow us to live into the strategies of, of being a place where families, where children, where youth, where adults can not only grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ, but we can intentionally find ways to serve through the facilities and resources that we have here. Uh, for, your, for your knowledge and information, and most importantly, for your prayers, um, after we have this time on Sunday to share and then a couple more weeks for questions to come in, we are going to be having a church conference, which will be happening on Wednesday, um, October 25th at, at 6.30 p.m., and according to our Book of Discipline as a United Methodist congregation, the church conference is a group that can act on behalf of the church. Um, and our district superintendent will be leading this meeting. And the purpose of the church conference will be to, again, share this and to share a motion that's going to be coming from the master plan team. And that motion from the master plan team will be something like this, that we as a congregation um, not only hear um, this plan, but as a congregation, we desire to, to move in and accept this plan, which means a, a complete renovation of our fellowship hall, um, which means the site work that Cindy alluded to, um, and the, I, the reality that is going to cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five million dollars. Uh, part of that, as Jim acknowledged, is going to be um, engaging with a, a financial fellow, uh, financial fundraising company that's going to that's going to give us assistance. But all of this is in in tangent to next year as we continue to to move ahead. Next year is our 50th anniversary as a congregation. What an exciting time to have a, a major renovation in front of us 
where we can celebrate 50 years in the Fort Myers community and be excited about the next decade, the next two decades, the next 50 years that God has in store for us as Cypress Lake United Methodist Church. Not every church is in a place where they truly can celebrate, where they truly can get excited about the future that, that we see that God has before us. But here in this place at this time, all of us are a part of of this congregation right now. Um, not only are we seeing growth numerically, but we're also seeing people grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And we strongly believe as the pastors, as the staff, as the leaders of Cypress Lake United Methodist Church, that God is calling us not simply to be content where we are, but to move into a future, to move into a future where more people know about the love and grace of Jesus Christ, where where people hear not only about the love and grace of Jesus Christ, but how it can apply to their life um, and the relationship that, that we desire and that God desires for them to have uh, with and through Jesus Christ. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for being part of this congregation. Uh, if you have any questions, we want to just encourage you to reach out over email. We've set up a, an email that will go to um, those of us that are panelists on here so that we can address these, these questions in a timely manner. What we want to commit to you today is that over the next few weeks, you're going to be hearing um, different ways through Q&As that we're going to be able to share any of the questions that come in. But to email those questions to us, it's simply going to be the email address of clumc um, at cypresslakeumc.com. So clumc at cypresslakeumc.com. And that email address, which is our, our general church email address, uh, we'll be able to get your questions and we'll be able to, to answer your questions over the next seven to 10 days. Again, on behalf of the church, on behalf of the staff, on behalf of the leadership of this congregation, thank you for your time. Thank you for being part of this congregation. And friends, we are super excited about uh, what we've presented today and where we feel God is leading us. I want to ask Glenn Pittard, our church council chair, if he would end our time in prayer this afternoon. Sure. Thank you, Marcus. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life and for the grace and freedom to worship together as the body of Cypress Lake United Methodist Church. We thank you for those individuals, both staff and laity, who have dedicated their time, knowledge, resources, and have diligently worked to clear a path for growing our congregation and campus. We pray that our discussions and planning will bring honor and glory to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And again, please, if you have any questions, any comments, we would love to hear your feedback. We're, we're thankful for the time you've given up today. If you're watching this live, or if you're watching this as a recording, and we're just so excited that you're part of Cypress Lake United Methodist Church. God bless you all.